So before we script, we will need to, to have a part that dictates the start of the ray when we shoot. So duplicate the aim part and name it ray origin and place it at the end of the barrel. Do this on both view models. We can now script. So first of all, in the previous video, I've made a mistake of adding a local to this way C frame. So remove that. Now to start off, we need to know where the player aims at. To do so, we just need to get the player's mouse. The gun is fired when the tool is activated. So let's make a function for that. We get the position of the mouse and then define the two possible rear origins, if it's from the third person view model or the first. If there is no view model, we just return it. Our gun part will be the part of the ray origin and ray origin will be the position of the gun part which is the part of ray origin. I know it's a little confusing but it's easier when you read the lines. We now create a ray cast that goes in the direction from the ray origin to the place the mouse clicked. We had a filter to ignore the character of the player. We then check if the ray hit something if so, we are notify what it is. If not, we simply redirect the ray direction for further usage for the bullet tracer. When testing it, you should see in the console that it does notify what it hits. To shoot on the server side, and see if the player hits something, we need to create a script inside the tool. And the remote event and name the remote event shoot event. In the server script we just created, start by defining the tool of the gun and to define our shoot event. Create a function that activates when the remote event is executed. We verify if we have our character in case he is dead. Then we just need to copy what we did from the local script, except with some minor tweaks. Once you're done with that, we are going to execute the remote from the local script. So define your shoot event. And then fire server the remote with the following information. When you test it, you should see that it prints from both the server and the local script. To make the blade tracer, we first need to make the tracer. 
You're going to create a particle in the workspace and copy its texture, then create a beam inside the ray origin. This will be your tracer. Paste the texture inside the beam, create two attachments, both need to have different numbers in their name. Copy the attachment one position, now move the attachment, attachment one and you can modify the beam to make it look like a bullet tracer. I recommend you modify the color, light influence, the transparency, the speed, the length and the width of the beam. Once you're happy with what you've done, paste back the corners of the attachment 1 into the attachment 1 and duplicate the beam and the attachment into the other view model. We can now script. In the local script, we're going to create a function for the bullet tracer. What we are doing is that we move the attachment 1 to the hit or miss position. This will make the tracer visible for a brief amount of time since we use a debris to move it back to its original position afterwards. You need to also add the tracer in the server script. We actually do the same thing as the local script. When you test it, it should work. To make your camera recall, we will first need some variables for the recall time, recall amount and so on. You might notice that the return amount is lower than the first recall amount. That is because the recall never fully goes back to normal. It makes it more realistic. Create a recall function. This is where we're going to modify our camera angle for the recall. What we initially do is we modify the angle of our camera step by step in a loop to make the camera look up. How do we stop it? Well, we use a tick that will go on until our recall time tells it to stop. We do the same for downward recall. Now you just need to execute the function at the end of the activate function. If you test it, you can now see there is a recall.
This is it for the part 2 of the tutorial on making a FPS system. This was a pretty short video because the next one will be a bit more technical. In the next video I will show you how to fully do VFX. I'm talking about bullet drops, recoil animation, load animation and gunfire animation. I see it a lot but a lot of effort goes into making these videos. Subscribing or a comment or even a like would really support and motivate me to keep going. Your feedback on the first video has been very nice, so thank you for that. Anyways, that's all for me. See you next week.